That's the other thing I can't understand as a, uh, uh, as a writer. I've only written one thing, and it wasn't really a piece of writing, but it was so naked compared to acting. I mean, acting's naked in its own blood sport yeah. way, but you get to kind of pull this kind of this delusion bubble over you, like, yeah, this is working. I have to believe it's working. I have to believe <laughs> the show is working because I have eight more shows. Yeah. You get to pull the delusion bubble over you, and you keep going, and then you get out of town, and you pop it, and you go, what was that? Yeah. But as a writer, it's there. You're not there to pull any bubble over it. Some writers drink a lot. Some writers never watch. What do you do? I sit and I'm interested in um, the parts that I think are working, that I like, I don't care about, right? They seem to go, I, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. Oh, here comes this little moment. Oh, God, it, you know, it might be 30 seconds and it goes on for half an hour in my mind, right? But what I'm interested in is why that isn't working. Is the actor too far upstage? Is the bloody light, you know, is it the focus wrong? Is it the is the deliver is it the line like because there's many reasons why you know, mm -hmm. something in a play doesn't work particularly in the you know like a first production or a second production, and so for me my focus I don't feel exposed. The only thing I feel is that I don't I can't go to the washroom right because I'm always afraid of being in the cubicle and people are going to come in and say rotten things about the play and then I'm going to come out and they're going to be embarrassed. Um, but the play Blood Relations that you wrote way back then do you look at it now and go and yeah, I wrote that when I was, you know, 20 years ago. I would never write like that now because I've grown, I've matured. I don't even think of it as me. Like, I, 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 I don't, I, you know, I look at it like somebody else wrote it. I look at all my plays like somebody else wrote them. If I direct my own work, the actors always say to me, like, and I'm a little bit bad this way, you know, oh, this isn't working and this isn't, oh, yeah, we're, okay, we worked on our own. Well, fuck this. I don't have to ask the playwright. I can, I just take the pen and cross out that bit, or I change that line to there, or I say, we well, you know, like, has anybody got any idea? <laughs> you know, like, we change it, <laughs> right? I might not change it in the text, right. because the reason it's not working may not, I may feel that, I, I may feel that text-wise it works. Right. It's just that for some reason we can't get there now, and we can't spend any more time on it, or, like, you can have what I call a black, okay, we got a black hole here. If you run fast enough and you jump over it, the audience doesn't notice that black hole. You yeah, what it. we call thin ice. Yeah. <laughs> you skate like mad over skin, you don't stop. You just yeah, skate. Yeah, you get, get to the other side yeah. and you get going. Yeah. yeah. And so I, so I just, uh, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't feel that, I don't feel exposed. Like it, it, I've gone to someplace else. It's like sometimes I call the playwright he. Oh, yeah, what was he doing when he did that? I don't know what that means when I do that, but at any rate, it, I'm, I'm interested in why is the audience, oh, the, this is a bad laugh. Why is it a bad laugh? You know, uh, I, I got to look at that. Is it the line that I've written? Is it the way they're playing it? Is they just need a release and it doesn't matter what the hell is there, they're going to they, they're gonna take one, <laughs> you know, just because we've built a certain amount of tension. And, and, and so I'm, a, I'm interested in, in analyzing what it is that's happening when I'm looking at it. So I don't, I, I, don't, I don't feel exposed. When you look at work uh, like Robert Lepage's work, that kind of very imagistic kind of creative yep. theater, um, that the text is constantly morphing and changing over years through productions, mm -hmm. is that a, a discipline that you would ever try? Or Because partially underneath this question is, why in English-speaking Canada do we still seem strongly based in text-based plays? Um, I lay some of it at the fault of the, um, the, the workshop process, which is often, um, you know, around the table and kind of psychological examination of character. So some of the most interesting, excuse me, things in character are ambiguity or contradiction in which we do things as people, uh, you know, the human being does things that are weird and often those are, w w there's this, we set up a process that often uh, doesn't allow for the head of gabber moment at the end, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, and and, and those, you think there's a function of workshop? No, I think that that workshop 
destroys the possibility of those kind of interesting complexity and ambiguity because we want to answer those questions. And so it makes it thinner and thinner. And what you want to do is we don't have the time to actually get up on our feet. And, and well, I'm a big person that says you really discover what's happening. Sitting around the table, you can make any decision you want. It's when you get up on your feet and you suddenly realize that what you always thought you were saying to her, if you're looking at him, it's a different moment, you know, so that's where you, and something that isn't clear to you, you know, around a table, when you start to get up and you're, you know, the whole body is immersed in whatever that is, you start to find an intuitive or an instinctive truthfulness. And so I think now, along with that, is that I, our major companies, in my mind, have never really, or not even really, have never integrated real development in, in, into their operating budget. You know? So they have workshops in their operating budget, but often they don't have... Often in plays that they never intend to produce, and often in plays that are not ready or justified by a workshop. But what do you have to do? I put in for a grant, right? I'm going to do these many workshops, etc. Well, maybe you don't have that many plays that are worth that actor's time, etc. Which I think is disrespectful to actors. <laughs> but you're going to you're going to do it's a in a weird way. If that work, there's this idea that there's all this wonderful work out there. I don't know that I believe that's true. So you run workshops. So how can you? How would you then suggest that these plays would do well by being workshop and those plays? Excuse me either go to production or go home? Well, the first thing is that I would say, okay, if we wanted to look at, say, Robert Lepage, that kind of work, you say, okay, we're really going to invest in this a play, and, and, and I don't want to even think about um, the, is it the Jekyll and Hyde of disaster that happened that went across the country? Oh, right, you remember okay. that horrible yes, yeah, thing? Yeah. Um, was that Robert? No. No, that wasn't. But it's just an example of a piece that apparently was when it went through inf infinite yep. drafts and lots of workshops and, then, and made changes all the way, none of which made it better. You, you have to be prepared, it seems to me, to take work, to spend time this year really investing in some of those other accoutrements because theater, spectacle, theater is spectacle too. You know, so you want to have access to some lights and costumes, and then maybe at the end of having, in that requires maybe an ensemble that you have, uh, you know, actors that are dedicated to that. At the end of that, somebody has the guts to say, "This isn't going. This isn't good enough," and we're going to cut in that loss, just like you do in R and D and the oil industry, you know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, but you do spend the time getting to play with all of that stuff. That's what uh, Robert said about Ex Machina, is mm -hmm. that you know they will he will go to the Met and say, okay, I will do your opera for you. I'm going to work up at, uh, on up in Quebec here. I'll have the designers. I'll get yep. uh, dancers in, whatever. And then they say oh, he'll work up a version working on something technically. And then they will go after a couple of months. You know this is not working. Yep. Let's take all those designs, all those hydraulics. Let's park them back there because maybe they'll come up in another show. But you know what? Not working. We have to start again. That's right. So how do we create a, 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 an infrastructure and, or a thought process in our theaters and our general managers that would actually allow that kind of creative cycle to go? Because you've been an artistic director. Yes, but what you start to understand is that, in my mind, is that the captain can't turn the ship <laughs> by themselves, right? The big, the big thing I learned as an artistic director was that you, you can't do anything by yourself. No matter, you, you have to have the backing, not only of your board, but in fact you need uh, funding bodies that support you. You need, you, you need a lot of, I don't know, do you, does Soul Pepper have anything like that? I mean, they sort of have, you know, so that... Albert so Schultz people are trying, been, yes. Albert Schultz has been very, very yeah. astute in creating a community, a financial community, a professional community around it, a teaching community that will keep that whole repertory thing going. Yeah. Because he can't do it on the subscription model, here's a year, here's six shows, buy your tickets, here's a budget. He can't do it on that way. Um, it's different Lepage's method, 
uh, meaning who also says, I can't do it on that subscription method. Yeah. So the question is, what do we do as English Canadian artists who are in this kind of, in the Gestetner, as it were, of season subscriptions that produce budgets, which produce expectations. And plays that run for a certain length, whether they, you want to take them off after two weeks or extend runs. They, we, we so how do we break out well, of Well, we've invested, well, there, there isn't any way to do it that's going to make everybody happy, right? Or anybody happy sometimes. You know, like everybody happy. It, 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 I don't know how, we, because the structures we've built, I mean, if we were to look at Theatre Calgary, you know, doing cats, I don't really think I'm not for, it'll sell out, it'll make them a whole bunch of money, you know. But does Canada Council money, is it meant for productions of cats? That's right, exactly. No, so that we, what we have are the theatres with the greatest resources <laughs> are, are, are the ones who, who really are, I think their decisions are mainly made on profit, but they're unable to generate real profit, right. you know, so they sit under the not-for-profit not model. Right. I don't know why we don't move them under tourism or industry or, <laughs> or something like that. And then we have smaller companies, which I, which I think, you know, struggle to try and create that kind of a model with, with actors and everybody working in it, usually young, uh, underwriting mm -hmm. those, those processes. And, and, and more and more, I, it seems to me that um, there's less interest in text you know, in, in, in text work. I, I, don't, I don't know how when we see, if we look at our major regionals, for example, you know, which that's where, I don't really think of them as, as, as creative environments. I don't think of them as environments that have been created, <laughs> you know, for artistic expression in performance. <laughs> uh, that's not what they, were, they were designed for that a bit more than they are now, are they not? Way back then, when they were started. Yes, maybe less was at risk then. When I think of the early years of Theatre Calgary with um, uh, Chris Newton. And the early years of MTC with John Hirsch. Yeah. And Eddie Gilbert, there was stuff and on those stages that And you look at the shows they did, tough. which we'd never, which we yeah. wouldn't see. You know, I, so I, why could they be more adventurous in the early years of theatre? Uh, you know, they had the license to be more adventurous or creative in those early years, and we seem to have lost that license. Why? Well, we built culture palaces that all of a sudden had demand. You know, they have demands. They become part of move to when they talk about quality of life. When we you know justify the theatre in terms of quality of life numbers, they're not talking really about the product. With, the product, which is the production. What they're talking about is move to Calgary. We have an Olympic, we have a, we have a, a football, a national football team. We have an international hockey team. We have a center for the performing arts, uh, which has a season of these kind of plays. You know, so, so in somehow the, we, we've set up an industrial method of creation which says you have this many weeks to, to put it up. You know, so what we need is boldness <laughs> in an artistic director that says, you know, I'm coming in and I'm, and I, and I'm changing what it is. This, is. this is a place you come to be challenged and provoked and we don't want, it seems like we are afraid that our audience doesn't, doesn't want that.